Hey, so let's talk about one of the main things that cause most people to fail in their business, especially if they come from like a corporate background. So I basically I was talking to this gentleman and he was super hyper focused on the wrong aspect of his accounting and bookkeeping business. And it's one of the things that, you know, as I kind of look back over time, that people who generally tend to struggle with their business tend to fall into the same trap. Now, the first trap that most people do is they get hyper-focused on their services. So when I say hyper-focused on their services, what I mean is that, like, like the guy was asking a million things, like, what's the proper mix of, like, bookkeeping versus tax planning? Should I offer this? Should I offer this? How much of this should I offer? You know, what should my onboarding process look like? You know, what's the proper onboarding software? Should I use pro software A versus software B? You know, it's just, like, what's my capacity? Like, should I start doing the work? Or should I, like, wait? Or should I, like, do this? It's just, like, it was a million questions and none of it was actually related to stuff that would actually help get clients. So I'm going to talk about like this because like one thing I kind of explained to him was like, that's 20% of your business. The services you offer is actually 20% of the new business. Now, once you start getting clients and you have people who are like kind of depending on you to do the work, that percentage will shift. But if you're still sitting in your job, maybe you're in corporate America, maybe you're, you know, a mortgage broker, maybe you're a real estate agent, whatever, and you're watching this video, you're not there yet. There's a lot of like mini steps. There are four other mini steps before we start getting the services. Okay, so services 20%. The real steps is mindset, prices, sales, marketing, then service. Okay, at least in the beginning, like we talked about. Over time, that will shift to being service to be a bigger percentage. But if you don't have any clients, you have no one to serve. Okay. Also, if you want some help growing your business, you're trying to avoid a lot of the mistakes that most people, including myself, made when I was growing my business, go ahead and click on the link inside the description, either above or below the video to book a call with myself or a member of my team to see if we can help you out. So jumping into this thing. Okay. So the first thing that we have to go and look at is mindset. Okay. Now when I say mindset, I'm not trying to get like woo woo on you and like be kind of like, you know, like, like a, like hippie, right? I'm not, I'm not trying to do that. What I'm trying to say is that you need to have a couple of elements. Number one is going to be focus. Number two is going to be goal setting. Number three is going to be prioritization. Number four is going to be, one sec, taking actions and just taking the right steps. So let's talk about goals first. So if you don't have a goal, then you don't really have a direction or a purpose. And it causes you to really start thinking in circles, right? It's, it's very easy if you don't have either a goal that you're moving towards or something that you're moving away from for you to be stuck in this kind of ever analysis paralysis where it's like you're thinking, you're thinking, you're thinking, you're watching a bunch of videos about the thing, but you never actually take the action. Now, if you don't want to actually start a business, that's fine. Like if this is just a hobby and it's just something you're just like learning about, that's awesome. But if you're, you know, someone like me, when I first got started, if you actually are trying to use it as a vehicle to, you know, either make money, support your family, or get your time back, then you need to know, like, where are you going and what's at stake if you don't? I was talking to this lady, and I basically asked her, I was like, yeah, you know, like, like what is kind of the alternative if you're unable to get this business going? And she goes, yeah, well, that's just not an option for me. And I'm like, that's, and from, I understand her enthusiasm, but when it actually comes in reality, it's like most people who start a business do not have the correct habits, mindsets, patterns of existence or skill sets needed to actually succeed in business. So for someone to think that, you know, they just because they're like, a, you know, they're a human being and they have like unlimited potential that they're going to be ultimately successful is a little bit arrogant in my opinion, right? It's like, there's a real danger of like not succeeding if you don't get the right skill set, right? And I'm not saying like, you know, if you join like a, a mentorship program, if you join a coaching program of some sort, your percentage of success does skyrocket a lot. But I'm just saying, if you just come from a corporate background, you've never done sales, you don't know how to price your services, you don't know how to do marketing, and all you did was like go in and like, you know, have someone like build you a website and it looks really, really nice, but you aren't taking the time to kind of develop those other, like, you know, the other skill sets we talked about, like, it's not just going to happen just because you want it. And this business model is a weird business model because it's not just based on hard work, right? It's really based on skills. Accounting and booking business are based on skills and it's like different skills, right? So doing the work is one skill set. And if you don't have that skill set and you're watching like this video or my videos and you're like, I can't start an accounting and booking business because I just don't have the skill set, like we'll teach that inside of our mentorship program. It's like something that we've added in the last uh, 10 months because we had a lot of people coming from other industries who are like trying to get into the field and learn. So we do teach you how to do that inside of our program. But goals, is the first thing the next thing is just like people they feel like they maybe don't have enough time and really time comes down to a prioritization right and when i say prioritization it's more about how you prioritize your business schedule 
within your overall life that allows you to be either like successful or unsuccessful, right? Because most people who are watching this video, like including like like many people who have joined our coaching program, like they have, um, they have a family, they have a full time job, they might have like you know two kids, three kids, four kids. I've I've had students have had as many as six kids in our program, right? And you don't really have a lot of time to waste. So instead, you need to be very good at like if you do spend maybe like an hour or even like if you spend two hours a day doing doing your business, right? Like most people like what happens is like they'll do the work after their kids go to bed. But even if you don't have clients, right? You need one to two hours, like ideally per day to be able to do this. Now, within that one, two hour say, it could be one hour when you wake up, it could be one hour like um, after you get home from work, after you cook dinner, etc. But you need to be able to know that like when you're inside of those work schedules, what are you going to be doing within those to be as successful as possible? <coughs> Most of the time it's going to be like marketing or it's going to be like sales related. So it's going to be like marketing to actually go and get the leads. It's going to be sales to actually go and take the consultation calls. And if you don't have any consultation calls, you need to be spending those time learning about like sales, how to do objection handling, how to build a rapport, how to ask the right questions, et cetera, et cetera. We can go into more details. Like we have a lot of videos on this YouTube channel that show you how to do consultation calls. We even have like, I think two or three videos that break down different scripts and how and why we use these scripts inside of our business in one set. <laughs> Need a little bit of water. Hey, I just got a haircut today, so they um, did something different with my uh, <coughs> with my beard. So it's just kind of interesting, you know. I use I usually I used to not like getting my haircut because number one, I thought it was it it wasn't necessarily that it was like a waste of money. I just thought it was like a waste of time. It's like it's like after. If if you're kind of like me, like when you get your haircut and like you go to like um, a black barber, right? If you get on like the weekends, you have to wait there for like three hours because everyone comes in on, on a Saturday or Sunday. And then if you try and go during the week, it's like it takes time away from like either eating or relaxing or, you know, like spending time with your significant other, etc. So it's just, it's just like a waste of time. It's like I used to just like get my haircut like once every two months. It was, it was ridiculous for a long time. But nowadays, you know, it's just one of those things I use it to kind of um, get away and just like relax for like, you know, a good 30 minutes. So it's just interesting, you know, different priorities shifting over time. But again, that's about like prioritization. So I'm not saying prioritize your business above your, your family, right? I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is when you're going to be working on your business, you need to make sure that you're doing the right things. So if you're doing the right things, you don't need to do as much like time spent, you know, in the business as what someone else was. I, I was talking to this one lady. She's like, yeah, I spend like... I spend like four hours a day, you know, on, on accounting and bookkeeping, my, my accounting and bookkeeping business. Like, okay, cool, man, you should be getting like some clients by then. Oh, well, I've never really gone after clients. I just watched like a lot of YouTube videos about like how to actually do accounting. It's like, that's cool, but it's like, one, you work your full-time jobs as an, as, as an accountant. Like, you probably know enough accounting to, to at least get your first client, but it's just really not knowing what to do and fill that time with. So you generally tend to get overwhelmed. And if you get overwhelmed, then you don't do anything, right? Which comes to the next thing. It's like, it's not about knowing every step of the way before you get started, right? It's like, you need to know a direction. So let's say that you're trying to like climb a mountain. Your job is to know like the direction of the point of the summit of the mountain. And then your job is just to focus on the next step and the next step and the next step and the next step and the next step. Now, of course, it's an extreme example, right? You might need to take, to take like a map, right? And map is not something that you plan out ahead of time. It's something, again, directions. You just need to know where's the direction. But even if you have that, it's just like you just got to go move, 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 move. One step, two step, three step, four step, five step. Versus a lot of people, what happens is like they will try and like plan out the entire, entire, entire point, entire journey ahead of time. And like, if you do that, you're just gonna see there's just way too much cost, there's too much danger, you're not gonna make it. And like logically, it just doesn't make sense to even try to go and climb that mountain, right? Versus the people that actually do climb the mountain, the ones that, okay, I know I wanna go that direction, I can buy a map along the way while I'm up there, and once I'm there, I can course correct inside there, and at least I'll be further and closer to my goals than someone who's like prioritizing everything. And that's kind of like what I've noticed just from people that are successful in this business. The next thing, the next 20% is going to be really understanding your pricing structure. 
Now, when I say pricing structure, like like at a bare minimum, there are a couple of criteria. Number one, I'm always having our students, at least the beginner students in the mentorship program, charging five hundred to five thousand dollars per month per client. Like we can give you pricing tools so you know exactly how to charge when you look at someone's books, but let's assume you don't have one. You really need to go and set your pricing in accordance to whatever your um, whatever your yearly financial goals are. And it's gonna be based on the hours work. So let's say that you're going to be Let's say that you want to make like six figures, right? So you divide six figures divided by 2080, right? That's the number of hours in like the average like work week if you're working like 40 hours a week. Now that's going to break down to about $48 per hour. So that means that whether you charge hourly or whether you charge a flat rate, if you can make sure that by the time you get to 40 hours a week, you're above $48, I, I like to run up to 50, then you're at least on track to hitting your goals. And that just means that you're not underpriced. That doesn't necessarily mean that you're priced correctly. It just means that you're not underpriced, right? Underpricing really happens when the price you're charging, number one, is like drastically lower than what the um, you know amount of work will actually like take. And number two, another way to look at, at underpricing is underpricing based on your goal. If you filled up all of your working hours, would you be able to hit your goal? If the answer is yes, then you're at least priced like at the bare minimum, like acceptable price. If the answer is no, then you have underpriced all of your clients and you're probably gonna need to fire some clients and then either raise prices or fire clients. <clears throat> Where if you don't know how to actually go and raise the price on your existing clients, um, I can't remember if I made a video on this channel about that. Um, I could make another video in, in, in the next couple of either like days or weeks about like how to actually go and raise your price on a client. If you want me to make that video, go ahead and type down raise, R-A-I-S-E, inside the comment section. And then if I get enough like interest, I'll actually make the video. If not, you know, I'll just assume that no one really cares about raising price on undercharged clients. So that's the next set. Now, in between pricing, next is going to be like sales. Now, when it comes to pricing and sales, there is kind of this like middle ground, right? And that's really the communication of value. So I can give you a tool, right? I can give you a pricing calculator. And that's great for you to know exactly what it should be. But if a pricing calculator tells you it's like a million dollars per month, but you can't communicate to the person on your consultation call like why the price is the way it is, they're not going to buy from you. Right, so you need to understand exactly how to communicate value. Now, value generally comes from understanding how to connect your service to their goals, right? Because most business owners who are successful have a goal. They have some sort of goal. They have some sort of target they're shooting for, right? That's kind of like what we talked about in the beginning. Like, if mindset, if you don't have a goal, you're not really going to be in business. You're not really going to be successful in life, right? You need to have a goal because that pulls you towards something. Now, when they have that, if you can match the service to them being certain that they're actually going to be able to reach their goal, they're willing to pay you a much higher amount than if you're just talking about like, you know, the transactional nature of bookkeeping or you're just gonna help them do like tax prep, but they don't really understand exactly why. For example, let's say they're doing like a tax planning. Some of the value you can communicate is that I'm going to save you money on taxes, so instead of actually having to put it towards your taxes, you can put it towards your future. Or you can use it to go and buy like like your dream car, or you can use it to go buy your dream house, or you can go and put it all like in a, in a fund for your children when they go to college, right? It's like, what are all the different things that people actually like want as a result of being able to save that money. And the more that you can communicate that and the more effectively and clearly that you can relate that to the, what their actual true goals are, the more that someone's going to willing to pay you to go and do it. Now, next is going to be like sales, like the actual sales skills itself, okay? So this is gonna come down to asking great questions. It's gonna come down to um, making sure that you're focused on them. One thing I have a lot of, that I see a lot of people, because I review all of our mentorship students' like calls, like their consultation calls. It's funny how like most people who are bad at sales, they make everything about them. Like they talk about like you know where they went to school. They talk about like their pedigree. They talk about like why they why they're doing the business. They talk about like they can't do X Y Z thing because they need to go and like do X Y Z thing with their like money, family, time, dog, etc. It's like no one. No one who's going to buy from you really cares that much about like what you have going on. Like they care about you as a person, but you only do that you only really do that in after you have them hooked and after they actually care and understand that you actually have their best intention at heart. Like no one's going to pay you money and then like want to have like a bunch of things that they like balance with your life. And I'm not saying that like in a mean way. I'm just being completely honest with you.
right? If I was going to lie to you, I'd be like, yeah, you know, it's all about you, and it's all about you, like, what you want to do in your life and stuff, and it's like, that's cool, but in order to really get what you want, you need to help other people get what they want, and you need to be able to communicate that at all times, that your goal in this business is to help the other person get exactly what they want, because what that's going to do, it's going to give you the free time, right, because you'll be able to leave your job. It's going to give you the income where you don't have to worry about getting another job because the money's flowing. It's going to give you the ability to be able to, like, survive, like, natural disasters or, you know, recessions or, you know, periods of economic, like, um, unrest, right? Because you're going to have the clients that care about you because you've taken so much care in them and their business and their success, okay? So it all starts from that consultation call. Then you have to get really good at just presenting the value of what you do. We already kind of talked about that a little bit, but I have, like, a really organized presentation I teach you to use. So that's very consistent what you're doing, right? Because if you have a very consistent way that you do your consultation calls, you're going to have a very consistent close ratio. Now, your closing ratio is the percentage of people who get on a call with you and end up paying at your target price point. Right. Now, most people, when they're first getting started, at least for me, I had like a 1 out of 37 percent, uh, 1 out of 37 people would, would sign up on average because I just didn't know what I was doing. I didn't have a script. I didn't know any objection handling. I didn't know how to control my voice from a modulation of my voice, and it caused me to be really bad. Right. So number one, I like I started doing a bunch of different courses. So like I purchased a course on how to go and communicate properly, how to go and ask good questions. So then I just adapted those questions for accounting and bookkeeping. Right. The next thing I had to go and learn how to like do a presentation. I paid a lot of money for like different like sales coaches and stuff to help me like write down my script and exactly like, what I was going to say in my presentation. Then I paid another like I paid another guy like seven grand to me like every day to like work on objection handling, right? So I knew exactly how like, how to if someone said like the price is too high, if someone says like maybe it's not the right time to get like a cleanup, right? Then I learned how to overcome those objections, and that really was the biggest thing because if you can really get good at sales, then you don't really need to have as many like leads or different people that are gonna buy from you as if like you're bad at sales. So it's like. I always focus on, like, the sales aspect because if you just get it good at that, you don't need a million leads. Like, we have people getting to, like, five, ten grand a month getting one consultation call a week. Like, that's it. Just one consultation call a week. Just close your consultation call, and you'll be good. Close your consultation call, get the price right, and you'll be good. Next can be marketing. And we have a lot, a lot of videos on, like, marketing. So, I mean, that's, that's pretty, um, pretty clear. Most people know they need marketing. It's just a matter of, like, what marketing strategy you're going to use. I like using partnerships. I also like using like LinkedIn as my sort of social media. We have a lot of videos on that, so I'm not going to go into too great of detail here. <clears throat> Finally, it's going to be your service. Okay, so now you can start talking about your onboarding. Now you can start talking about setting expectations, right? Because like onboarding and expectations are actually part of sales, but it leads into service, right? That's all you need to do. Just get the client and then figure it out. Like, like just get the client and figure it out. Your first client is going to be your worst client. Even if you price things out and you, like, plan things out and you have a map and you sat there for, like, two years thinking about how you're going to handle a client, it's going to be messy. Like, it's, it's going to be messy. You're not going to ask for the right documents. You're going to ask for the documents. They're going to give you partial documents. They're not going to fit it to you. You're gonna, your software is going to break down. You're going to try and get, like, a practice management software. It's not going to work out because you don't really understand technology. You're going to have communication issues. They're going to call you, and you don't know how to, like, hold your boundaries or hold that line. And, yeah, it's just like your first client, if you're doing this on your own, is probably going to be, like, bad. It's just... But that's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. Like, like, like business is not perfect. Business is about like constantly improving. Like I just, I just, I just tweaked my onboarding process like two weeks ago. Like it, you're never going to be like fully a hundred percent like, um, like arrived. It's not, that's not how business is. Business is like you're constantly making adjustments so you can constantly be able to improve and get more, um, output out of your existing systems. And you just get better at like improving those systems until they become extremely efficient. Right. So it's like, Again, just get started. Take your first client. Even if you feel like it's going to be like a lot of work, just take your first client, price it accordingly, price it correctly, get started, get in the game, right? That's the biggest thing. It's like, it's like everything looks different when you're on the sideline. You only get the true, accurate understanding of what the game is actually like when you're playing the game. So get in the game. Okay, and also if you want some help, maybe you've just watched too many YouTube videos. Maybe you just like see too many things, and you're just like confused by like what is actually the right things you need to do to go grow your business. If you want to avoid having to like recreate the wheel and spend a million hours watching YouTube videos to potentially get your business started, go ahead and click on the link inside the description, either above or below the video. Book a call with myself or a team member to see if we can help you inside of our private mentorship program. Now, again, it is paid. 
But it's like, at least it's direct. It's like, you can either go and spend your time, which, you know, a lot of people don't have a lot of time to kind of, like, waste and figure this stuff out on their own. Or you just, like, pay a little bit of money, like, less than, you know, the cost, the value of your time to go and figure this stuff out. We give you exactly, like, the blueprints, the scripts, the templates, exactly where to go, the leads, etc. And you just go ahead and kill it. And then you don't have to worry about, like, learning this stuff from scratch. It's just given to you. And then you just get the money. So it's like... You basically avoid all the trial and error, and you just take the proven process you put in play for your business. You go and grow. Okay, so that's you. If you want to like skip the line, you want to skip the learning curve, go ahead and click on the link inside the description. Book a call with myself or a member of my team to see if we can help you inside of our paid mentorship program. Like we can't help everyone just from like a capacity like standpoint. Like we only accept about like ten to maximum twelve people per month inside of our mentorship program. But then also, it's just like from like a values, a mission, and kind of like the goals perspective, we're, we, we're not in alignment with everyone, right? We're looking for a very specific person who qualifies for our help, can utilize our process, and can actually go and get really solid results in a very short period of time. If that's you, go ahead and click on the link inside the description, either above or below. Book the call. I'll see you there, and I'll talk to you soon. Have a great rest of your day. Hopefully, this video helped you.